and as a result, it matches production values perfectly. Now we're doing Bosnia 9. Okay. And right after Bosnia 9, Russia um, 1. Russia. Russia 1. We'll do Russia 1. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> I don't even dare to rehearse. Here we go. Two, three. We hired uh, Enon Zur, who is a composer that's done in a number of other uh, military shooters, to score the game. And he produced over an hour of original orchestral music, and then we recorded at the uh, Seattle Symphony. And uh, that adds a whole new level to the game. It's not just a little MIDI synth, or it's not just a four-piece band. It's a full orchestra that, that really helps bring you into the game. So it has this lush, rich, big sound. So you want to create something that will, will create the right atmosphere, that we will create the excitement. It's really exciting to be able to work with a full orchestra and work with a composer of the caliber of Enon Zor. He can write any style of music that you'd like to hear. The sound is massive extremely emotional. There's a huge impact when you have six basses and ten cellos and a full set of violins and horns. Very good. Thank you very much. That was a big one. Whew. Red Mercury is influenced a lot by the films, both in the look that we're going for as well as some of the locations. I've worked on a few levels for the for whole of the game. Right now, I'm working on Congo. The light bulbs are the lights. All these little icons here are the path nodes for the enemies to run around on. So this is to help the AI figure out where to go. So when they come running to this point, they know, oh, I can go hide over here, I can hide over here, I can hide behind there, and they'll pick one of those random spots to hide. This is our Karma editor, and Karma is the physics-based uh, real-time animation tool. Basically, when you see characters die and they fall over like dynamically over handrails, it's uh, Karma. And I have a test scene for testing the Karma data, which is just a bunch of guys in a room, and I can run around and shoot them and watch them die. That's a switch. When I go over that, guys start showing up. You can set properties so that when they die, they, they are traversed in a particular direction at a particular velocity, these guys are those green spots, so I can adjust what happens to them. If you set it too high, they'll start falling through the floor, doing kind of weird stuff, so you gotta find this fine balance where they look heavy enough, but still behave and interact with the environment. So, whoa, too much on that one. <laughs> so when you see them fall different ways, and, or this guy like hanging, like looking real heavy right there, that's all adjusted and set in the cat editor, which is where you can set mass properties and joint stiffness and dampening, etc. This is where the motion capture comes into for editing purposes. What it allows you to do is take the raw motion capture data, um, clean it up, add keyframes to it, or even create uh, motions entirely from scratch, depending on what type of motion you're trying to portray in the game. You can link their skeletal structures together. So say, for example, that if I actually rotate his skeleton, you can see how the corresponding character moves in relation to that. It's really useful because it allows you to kind of tackle animation situations with characters interacting that, for the most part, have been more problematic in the past. Basically, we want the commando soldiers in the game to behave like your action movie hero. Okay, follow me! Go, go! This is an example of a lip sync system that's in the Unreal uh, Engine in Red Mercury. What it does is it takes um, individual wave files based on the sound and the amplitude of, of the wave, and it'll actually um, include 
uh, eyebrow movement for emphasis. And the beauty of the system is, is it's completely language independent because it takes the sounds um, and breaks them apart as the human voice produces sound, so um, it can be used for any language. Crash site is around the corner. Check for survivors. We also support a lot of multiplayer action in as well. We support two-player split-screen co-op mode, which are separate missions outside of the single-player campaign that you can unlock as you progress. We also support System Link if you have a LAN party, up to 16 players, and then we also support Xbox Live. And for those, we also support uh, Deathmatch, Team Deathmatch, Capture the Flag, and uh, Plant and Defuse the Bomb, and a VIP Rescue. So there's a wide range of experiences that people can have, from single player to co-op to multiplayer online. Well, you know, I love these kind of games. These are the kind of games I like to play. What'll make uh, Red Mercury stand out is the fact that we're going for more cinematic and movie style effects. We're trying to keep it so it's a faster paced action movie, kind of like a summer blockbuster. If you play it with a 5.1 surround sound system and it's on a big screen, I mean, you are in combat. You are in the middle of this war zone. It's intense. Our game is about reloading, pulling back. Rockets going off, there's mortars. We're in trouble. Your team is screaming and yelling at you. Boom. Firing. Trying to find cover. We're being attacked. Explosions are going off. Shooting over your head. Walls are shaking. We're being ambushed. Your helicopter gets hit and it's flaming in flames. And Leaning out. Bullet holes and ricochets going all around you. Trying to stay alive. You forget that you're playing a game. That's really what our goal is. Just forget that you're in this game and you're trying to give you a greater sense of presence.